Now let's try the highest. We have the max function and giving, let's try, I'll give this for statistics. I'll give this as a reference point. We can select any reference point, but I'm giving you different versions of or different approaches of deriving your results. So this is also another approach. You can do the same thing as what you did for economics, just that it's with the max function and the columns that you shift would be two. But this time it's statistics where we are putting the starting point and max. Here under this, I'll use the offset function. This as the reference point. I want it to come down by one row, but do not go anywhere. Stay in the same column. Height will be four because we have four records here. Width will be one. Close the bracket. Okay, I missed on closing the bracket for the max function. So I accept it. And here we have the max of these. That's 85. Now let us try a similar one for the lowest in accounting. So we say min offset. Now I can also put my starting point over here. Let's say I put my reference point over here. Now I want to take the minimum of the scores in accounting and this starting point is somewhere within one of the scores of accounting and that's absolutely fine. Now if you fall into this scenario or situation, well, how would you craft your function or your formula. So sitting in this position, I don't want the function to go anywhere. Don't move by any number of rows and don't move by any number of columns. You are at the right place. Now height from here, it's four, but the rest of the cells are up over there. So height should be negative four. That's one, two, three, four. And width, we are in the same column, so we don't need to worry about the width. We can keep that as one. Close the bracket and close the bracket for min function. Hit enter. Here we have this 37. So I've explained you different variation and how to get your desired results using the offset function. Now let me show you some real applicability of this function, which you can best relate to and probably would better appreciate as well. Let's come to sheet two. And here we have some sales figures, monthly sales figures. Now I would like to calculate the year to month sales. All right, now I would like to calculate the year to month sales. That means first year to month. Now this is a cycle of Jan to December. So it starts from 45 in January, February it's 49. So the cumulative figure would be something like 94.5 okay so in other words i can say that we need to calculate the cumulative sales for each year until each month so this should be something like first should be 45 then it should be something like this plus this and goes on until december this is perfect but I cannot apply this formula to the right over here because this is a new year and for January it should be this and then again previous month plus one plus the current month figure. And this is the desired result but I'm not able to get a single function or a single formula to sort it at one shot. And this is where we'll make the best use of the offset function. Let me clear this off. So I would say sum offset. And under the offset function, we'll have this as the starting point. And I do not want the function to move by any number of rows and neither by any number of columns. Now the height would be one because we are focusing on just one row. Now when we say the width, here I would say minus month function and C2. Now let me explain you what exactly is happening here. But first let me close the bracket and show you the result of how this works. First let me show you the output. Here we have this, take a look. Two months total it's 94 and six months total it's 349.7, that's perfect here. 
And what is the annual total? It's 971.1, if we get that. And what about January? Here we have this again, 142.8, and then again the count increases. It keeps on accumulating. So we have got a year to month figures over here. If you are talking about the month of August 2020, till this month, the total sales was 518.7, and that's what we have here. If you are sitting in the month of January, that's the first month of the year. So it's only for that month that you get the figures for. And it keeps on adding or accumulating for subsequent months. Now, what exactly happened over here? What did we do? Why did I specify the month over here as the width? Well, what exactly is this month function doing? And it's a minus over here that I've used. That means when I'm using the negative sign over here, it's going backwards. It's the width. That means from left to right or right to left, the number of columns to be covered. So it's a negative here. So what exactly is this month function doing here? Let me show you. We have the month and the current date. Close the bracket. You see, it's one. Now, what if I were to select this further? Well, this is obvious, isn't it? That's obvious. So we are getting the month number for each of these months and that's perfectly fine. But how did it help with the width? Now, when I specified the width with a minus and this month, it's minus one. So it is only selecting one cell. But the moment you come to the next few months, let's say we are talking about the third month. So we are in the third month. And that means the width is minus three, which means sitting over here, the offset function will select last three cells, the current and last two cells. Now sitting in the fifth month, if month is negative five, so here the width is negative five. With the help of month function, we got the number five. So it, from here, it goes one, two, three, four, five. That's it. If you are sitting in the month of December, that's 12. And so it's the width that we had specified was with the minus sign. So that's minus 12. We say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you have the entire figure. Now coming on to the next year, that's January. I apply the same logic here, but this time the month number is just 1. So it's not going to go anywhere because the width specified is just 1. Now, be it positive one or negative one, it does not matter. It stays where it is. And coming back to subsequent months here, you can see for the second month, it's minus two. So again, it takes minus two. It is least concerned about the other ones. And here, minus three is the width. So that's how dynamic it is. The trick is in how well you use the function in Excel to derive your desired results. That's the art thing. It's not just about knowing functions, but it is the skill on about how well you can use the knowledge that you have gained or the functions that you have learned. So here, in order to escape out of the scenario where in, in January, it should not select the cells from previous year, I made the best use by using the month function. For August, it's the last eight months. For September, last nine months and so on. So this month function gave me the width. That's in the width section in the offset function.